Wild card implications are always in place. San Francisco leads the wild card chase, followed by the Cubs, the Mets, and the Phillies. Lineup cards are being handed out at home plate by manager Terry Francona and by Bruce Benedict, a coach for Bobby Valentine. Jerry Crawford, an excellent umpire, will call the balls and strikes this afternoon. C.B. Buckner at first base. Brian Gorman at second, and Tom Hallion will umpire at third. Giants have just a half game lead now on the Chicago Cubs for the wild card. The Mets are two and a half back, the Philly three and a half back, and right there also the Milwaukee Brewers and the Los Angeles Dodgers, so it should be an interesting case right down to the end. It is a warm, beautiful afternoon for baseball. Philly's trying to get off a 19-inning scoreless scheme here against Bobby Jones as the New York Mets take the field. Terry Francona's starting lineup this afternoon. The Glanville in center field leads off. Desi Relliford moved up in the number two hole. He'll be at shortstop. Scott Rowland at third base hits third. Rico Pronia first base batting fourth. Greg Jeffries moved out of the number five spot in left field. Mike Lieberthal will catch and hit six. Bobby Abreu in right field batting seventh. Mark Lewis the second baseman. He'll take the Matt Peach, the pitcher, batting ninth. Defensively for Bobby Valentine's Mets, it'll be Edgardo Alfonso at third, Ray Ordonez shortstop, Luis Lopez at second, Todd Pratt is playing first today, John Olrude getting the day off. Mike Piazza will catch Bernard Gilkey in left field, Brian McRae in center, and Butch Husky will be in right. On the mound is the 28-year-old right-hander Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones making his 19th start, he's 7-6 and six at 3.96 earned run average. This year he's faced the Phils twice. He's got two no decisions in those games. He's got a total of 10 innings, given up 14 hits against them, six earned runs, three walks, and three strikeouts. Opponents are hitting 255 off them. Lefties and righties about the same. He's got he's going to come at you with his fastball, curveball, changeup. He's a finesse type guy. Move the ball in and out, out of the, off the plate, in and off the plate. Change speed, just try and keep you off balance. He's four and four lifetime against the Phillies with a 4-1-0 ERA. Six, six shutout innings on opening day, and then the Phillies hit him pretty hard in his second start at Veterans Stadium. Ten hits in four innings and six earned runs. Made his major league debut against the Phillies at Veterans Stadium back in 1993, beating the Phils 9-5. Doug Glanville will lead it off for the Phillies. 13-game hitting streak. He's had hitting streaks this year of 18, 17, and now 13, hitting 393 in the last 13 ball games. Overall batting at 319. Fifth in the league in runs scored, second in the league in hits. Birthday wishes today to Joe Gray from granddaughter Taylor. And from us, Joe celebrating number 70 today. Well, to go from here to Montreal, two games with the Expos. Kirk Schilling against Carlos Perez tomorrow night. And the first pitch of the ball game is over for a called strike. Nothing in one to Doug Landell. Ball third base, gobbled up by Alfonso. And Glanville has retired one down. Yeah, one thing the Mets have defensively is an excellent defense. They have committed the fewest errors in the National League, 55, and that left side of the infield with Alfonso and Ordonez is among the best. It might be the best in this league, best I've seen. At Ordonez, so he just he makes anybody playing, whether it's a second base or a third, it's the guys on both sides of him. He makes them so much better. Well, when Greg Jeffries missed a couple ball games, Desi Relliford was moved up to the number two hole, and he liked it there. Let's see how he fares here. With Jeffries in the lineup, takes it high for a ball, one and nothing. Desi hitting a 285. Oh, no, it's a called strike. One ball and one strike to Desi Relliford. the high 
high breaking ball. One and two to count to Relaford. Center field, Brian McRae shading the sun, puts it away. Relaford is retired for out number two. And it will bring up Scott Rowland, who has been in the throes of a slump. Rowland hitting at 294 now. He is 0 for his last 15. Scott struck out quite a few times in this series and is among the league leaders in striking out with 84. Hey, he's 0 for 11 this year. He's got a couple of walks, but he struck out six times. One ball and no strikes to Scott Rowland. That's defensively. Have the philosophy in the outfield. Take away the alleys and give you the lines. They punch you in the outfield, as you see. Gilkey in left center and Husky in right center. Three balls and no strikes to Scott Rowland. A green light and chops it foul in and out of the stands. Retrieved by John Vukovic. A good play by Vukovic, and he will feed a pan a souvenir baseball. He's all heart, that Vuk. <laughs> <laughs> he is. <laughs> Rowland works the walk. He is a two out base runner for Rico Bronia. That's fourth, number two. First baseman, Rico Bronia. Bronia is batting at 265. 13 homers, 67 RBIs. Lifetime against Bobby Jones. He's two for six with a home run. Said well against his former team, the 339 hitter against the New York Mets. Well, they really play Rico to pull in the infield. Bordonia's almost behind second base. And Luis Lopez midway between first and second. There you see the shortstop Bordonia's. Now look where Lopez is on the outfield and closer to first than second. Not quite, but almost like a Ted Williams ship, for heaven's sakes. That's what it looks like, and Alfonso's got to be 25 feet off the third baseline. One ball and no strikes to Rico Bronia. Get out of here. He popped him up, foul and playable, Alfonso. Puts it away, that'll retire the side. For the first, Mets batting bottom half of the first. Bobby Valentine's starting lineup will have Brian McRae in center field leading off. Edgardo Alfonso, third base bat second. Mike Piazza catching hitting third. Butch Husky in right field bats fourth. Todd Pratt playing first base today hitting fifth. Bernard Gilkey in left field bats sixth. Luis Lopez, the second baseman, hitting seventh. Ray Ordonez at shortstop bats eighth. Bobby Jones pitching hitting ninth. Defensively, the Phillies line up with Scott Rowland in the third, Desi Relaford shortstop, Mark Lewis at second, Rico Brony at first, Mike Lee with all catching. Ray Jeffries in left, Doug Glanville in center, Bobby Abreu in right. They're tied, both of them tied for the major league lead in assists. Outfield assists with 11. And the pitcher is Matt Beach. Matt Beach, 3-6 and six with a 4.81 earned run average. His last start, which was his first one since his elbow discomfort, through excellent through six innings shut out ball gave up five hits only walked two and struck out three but he's not fared real well against these Mets one game this year he's pitched against him he lost 11 to nothing although he only gave up uh, eight hits and four runs in five of those innings but career numbers are not good he's 0 three in four games against him with a 6.87 earned run average Brian McRae leads it off against him and looks at a strike. McRae hitting at 247. The switch hitter is batting 233 right-handed. One strike to Brian McRae. Foul 
it back up over our heads. Nothing to do. As mentioned, both Doug Glanville and Bobby Abreu are tied for the Major League lead in assists. Tied with Jose Guillen of Pittsburgh and Andrew Jones of Atlanta. All of them with 11 outfield assists. One ball and two strikes to Brian McRae. McRae has been hot of late, hitting 545 in this three-game series. Looped in the shallow right. That's going to be trouble. No, it isn't. Great play by Bobby Abreu. Bobby Abreu had a long run for that ball. A fine catch by Abreu. One down. I think earlier in the year it would have been a much easier catch for Abreu, but he's not running that good. He's had that knee problem right around his kneecap, but he goes a long ways and makes a great catch. He just doesn't look like he's running like like normal, but still, that's, I mean, that's a great catch. He's kind of flexing his right leg even as we speak in the outfield, so that one hurt the knee a little bit. The batter will be Edgardo Alfonso. One or nothing to Alfonso. He's hitting 266. But he has hurt the Phillies this year, hitting at a 400 clip against the Phils with a homer and nine RBIs. Fouls it back and out of play. Almost got John Franco. Franco is serving a three-game suspension. He's sitting up here in the press box right alongside of us. So we know he's not going to pitch today. Two balls and a strike to Edgardo Alfonso. The fastball, two and two. Yeah, having Frank out there is, I guess, is some consolation if it goes down to late innings. But the way Dennis Cook is Cook pitching, it, yeah. <laughs> he's only given up two runs in his last 24 innings. So the way he's pitching. Uh, Oh, well, they can uh, afford to miss Franco yeah. for three days. There's John Franco. That's closer. One on the right. He will miss one more game with the suspension. That was for bumping umpire Angel Hernandez on the Sunday game in Atlanta before the All-Star break when Hernandez appeared to blow a call at home plate to cost him that's a ball game against the Braves. Two balls and two strikes. Line drive hit the right field. Alfonso continues to hit Phillies pitching. And here's another guy that hits Phillies pitching. Mike Piazza, as we saw yesterday. Uh, he gets his first one. Both of these home runs are to right field. That one out or half the plate, a fastball that goes well out. Then he gets a hanging curveball here. And when he starts hitting balls out to right field, which he can do, I mean, he, that's when he's locked in. What you want to try to do to Piazza, I think, is tie him up inside and not let him extend those arms because he has awesome power to the opposite field. If he's able to extend, he'll hit it out of any part of the ballpark. Uh, he's just so strong, but you're right. You want to, you, if you can, you want to crowd him. You want to keep that ball in on his hand like that. One ball and one strike to Mike Piazza. time against the Phillies a 336 hitter 19 career home runs against the Phillies two balls and a strike to him missing high and inside three and one The Mets have the second fewest home runs in the National League, 66, but that's going to pick up with the acquisition of Piazza. 
the outside corner with it, a full count to Piazza. A good time for a 3-2 changeup. Yes, it would. It was, but he reaches out and pokes it into center field. Had him well out in front, but Piazza got enough of it to loop it into center field for a base hit. That's one of the things when you talk about Piazza hitting home runs to right field. He stays back so well. He waits for the ball to get to him, and he's so strong. The, the thing about that's it, a great pitch. He, he's not really, he's fooled by it, but it, it's it's not enough to, to get him out there because he just, he's, he's so, it's so easy for him to go to right field on a fastball. He can wait back so long. Here's Butch Husky hitting at 262. He has awesome numbers against Beach. Six for nine lifetime with two home runs. That's uh, <laughs> one ball and one strike to Butch Husky. It's something I'm sure that Matt Beach is aware of. And Husky is too. Change up, grounded sharply back through the middle, base hit center field. Alfonso scores, and the Mets have jumped to a one nothing lead here in the bottom of the first. Well, it doesn't look like this is that bad a pitch. I mean, that ball almost looked like it was off the end of his bat. He hit it pretty good, though. Well, he got, you know, he had, he had Piazza out in front, and he got a ground ball, which he wanted to get in that situation. It just, you know, wasn't that a fielder. There's sometimes you go out, I mean, you don't, you don't concede, but sometimes you have to tip your hat. You can't look at yourself and go, well, you know, it's not like I made a bad pitch. You hung a pitch yeah. or something. You sometimes have to tip your hat to the guys with the bat. Here's Todd Pratt. He's playing at first base today. They're giving John Olerud a rest. Pratty hitting a 313. Thompson hey, hey, hey. halfway up to the plate. One ball and no strikes. A good block by Lever Thor prevented advance by the runners. Well, it's a curveball. He just he wants to make sure he doesn't hang it, and he just bounces it way in front of the plate. Lieberthal does a good job getting in there and blocking it. Well, his pitching coach, Caitlin Cisco. Fouls it out of play. One and one to count to Pratt. Tom Pratt's rookie year was in 1993 with those National League champion fighting Phils. That's quite, <laughs> quite a club to break in with. May never be the same. <laughs> he was, he was fun. He was a good rookie on the club. He, he was. really was. He's the only guy left from it there, Kurt Schilling. Pitch on a curveball, so the runners do move up, and that erases the ground ball double play possibility. Let's pause for station identification on the Phil's television network. You're watching Phillies baseball on WPHL TV, Philadelphia. This looks like another curveball that Matt throws in there and I don't know, it looked like it might have hit off a Lieberthal shin guard there. Well, the Phillies are going to stay back in the infield with the runners at second and third and one out. Two and one to count to Pratt. Chase the high fastball, two and two. Well, both curveballs that Matt Beach has thrown have been well down in the dirt. That was the one pitch that was bothering him when he had that elbow discomfort a couple weeks ago. And both of them have been thrown about 50 feet, 5 inches. Yep. 
So he may have to resort to being a fool. Just missed with the fastball. Was close. Pulled down. He may have to resort to being a two-pitch pitcher. Fastball and a changeup. Well, that would not bode well for Matt Beach because his fastball is pretty straight. He can throw it both in and out, but when it's straight, it makes it a little tougher. That's going to get a run home. Desi Relaford will throw out Kraft, but Piazza scores, and Husky moves up to third, so the wild pitch costing Matt Beach here, and the Mets lead it 2-0. Batting six, number 23, left Bernard Gilkey. It'll bring up Bernard Gilkey. Gilkey hitting at 233. As L.A. mentioned, Beachy has not pitched well against the Mets. Gilkey has good career numbers against him. Four for nine with a homer. One ball and no strikes. Out to Bernard Gilkey. That's with the change up. Two balls and a strike. 29 pitches already for Matt Beach in this inning. I'm right back with him. And Gilkey well out in front, two and two. Just inside with a fastball. It is a full count now to Bernardo Gilkey. have runners at first and third with two outs for switch hitting Luis Lopez. Number 17, Lopez. Lopez hitting 269 overall. Hitting a little better right handed than left. Batting 279 right handed. There you see it. 17 strikes, 14 balls. Not a good ratio. You're around 50-50. Balls and strikes. It's not good. Foul back up over our heads. One strike to Lopez. Put two across here in the first inning, leading it two nothing. This with the change up, two balls and a strike. They've gotten to the starters early the last few games. Two to two today in the first inning. Two yesterday in the first inning. Three. On Friday in the second inning. Could be out of his first inning. Relaford to Lewis, and that will retire the side. But the Mets put two on the board in the first. They do it with three hits, no errors, and two men left. After one, two nothing, New York. Greg Jeffries leads it off for the Phillies. Hitting out of the number five hole now. He's batting at 303. Making the switch of Relaford up in the lineup and Jeffries at the five hole. Jeffries is hitting 358 with runners in scoring position. And he has been productive with men on base. He balls in a strike to Jeffries.
missing low. It's three and one. On the outside corner, it's a full count to Jeffries. Jones, it'll be a base hit for Greg Jeffries. So Jeffries picks up an infield single to lead off the Phillies second. So you got Jones in his thigh here. Hit pretty sharply. A 3 2 pitch. Jeffries looking for a fastball, hits it right back at him. Jones just can't make the play, gets far enough away from him, get Jeffries to first. He's in it right back at him. Oh, looks like maybe going up his, up his he rib. A glove. Yeah. Line drive to left field, but guilty right there makes the catch. Well hit by Lieberthal, but had guilty one down. Brings up Bobby Abreu. Abreu batting at 306. Right fielder, Bobby Abreu. Todd Hundley laughing a little bit. And man, I'm glad I wasn't out there for that one. That was similar to the ball Lieberthal hit in the first game that he misplayed. Only the one that Lieberthal hit in that game was a little higher and probably a little tougher to judge. Jeffries with the bum ankle, not likely to do a whole lot of running. Gray was trying to bunt his way on, bunts it foul. Birthday wishes today to Julie Bissey of Haddon Heights, New Jersey, which is from Sister Mary and from us. In the second inning at Shea, the New York Mets leading by a score of 2 0. Trey, who has been a good hitter with runners on base. No balls and two strikes to Bobby Abreu. pitch there. Abreu got a fastball inside. It looked like he was just uncertain. I mean, he's not swinging about great as of late. Not terrible, but he just, by looking at that, it looked like it's a ball that he normally can turn on, and he just it looked like he was late and unsure, and then decided to swing. How is this one off down the left field side? Count holds it 0-2 to Bobby Abreu. Jeffries, runner at first base, he had an infield single, one down here in the second.
laid off the high fastball two and two. Bobby Jones was a compensation pick by the Mets in the 91 draft. Comes out of Fresno, California, went to Fresno State. First base side. He is not out of the Jim Cox school of pitching, Bobby Jones. You read my mind. Boy, <laughs> he hurts very slowly. <laughs> Human rain delay. But Husky back at the warning track makes the catch. Jeffries will have to hold on at first base. Two outs for Mark Lewis. Well, it didn't sound like he got it that good, but that ball, when it, when it did leave his bat, looked like it had a chance, but kind of died out there around the track. There's not a lot of wind out there. Was hitting at 245, he has excellent career numbers against Bobby Jones, four for eight with two home runs. One ball and no strikes to Mark Lewis. Concerned about that Greg Jeffries at first base. He really is. I mean, Greg doesn't have a big lead to start with. He balls and no strikes to Lewis. like Bobby Jones is playing red light and green light with each step. <laughs> Three and nothing. I don't think Jones really cares if he walks Lewis with the career numbers Mark Lewis has against him. Four for eight, two homers. If let the pitcher do up next. He did walk him on four pitches. That's the second walk given up by Bobby Jones. Matt Beach will bat. He's hitting at 148. Lifetime a 141 hitter. Strike the beach. Jammed him and he grounds a foul down the first base side. No balls and two strikes to Matt Beach with Jeffries at second base, Lewis at first, and two outs. That's a leading here in the second, two nothing. Ground ball in the hole. It's a base hit. Jeffries will have to be held at third. And the Phillies have the bases loaded. Just got past the diving Ray Ordonez. Jeffries had no chance of scoring on this ball. It's right in the hole, but Gilkey comes in so hard. 
Ball doesn't go that far into the outfield, but you see Gilkey, first of all, he's playing fairly shallow because there's a pitcher hidden, but he came in very hard on that ball, and there was absolutely no chance to, to send Jeffries. See Jeffries going around, John Vukovich holding him up right there. So Doug Glanville will bat with the bases loaded and two outs. Doug grounded out to third base his first time up. Side corner, one strike to Glanville. Glanville's been a productive hitter with the bases loaded, 429 lifetime. Tell you what, if he gets something to pull here off of Bobby Jones, they could score easily too, maybe even beat from first because Gilkey is way off the line in left field. He's over towards left center. They bunch him in the outfield, and they'll give you the lines. Glanville hit a curveball off of Jones in Philadelphia. Kind of left it in the middle of the plate and up a little bit. One ball one strike to Glanville. The two and one. Base hit left field. Jeffries will score. Being waved around. Lewis to throw to the plate. And Lewis is out. Gilkey, who has a good arm in left field, nails Lewis at home play. Doug Glanville delivers, and the Phillies scoreless inning streak is stopped at 20, but Lewis thrown out at home play. Phillies get a run, three hits, no errors, two left. After one and a half, Matt's lead it by a score of 2-1. Which Husky will lead off. He has singled and knocked in a run. Here's the ending of the top of the third where Desi Relliford got picked off second base by Bobby Jones. Jones to Ordonez. Well, he's getting a little bigger lead, bigger lead, bigger lead, and Ordonez quickly ran back behind him. Jones timed it perfectly and put the throw right on the money. That is not something that's going to help this Phil's offense score more runs. You can't get picked off in that situation. Husky had a cut, fouled it back, one strike to him. High with a fastball, one on one the count to Butch Husky. Inside two and one. Change up, fouled it out of play. Two balls and two strikes to Husky. full count. Well, he has thrown a lot of pitches here in the early going. Well, at this pace right now, Terry Francona, I'm sure, is hoping they can get five innings out of Matt Beach. Walking. Third walk surrendered by Beach. Our Pico Energy Power Rankings, Big Mac, Mark McGuire with 42 home runs. Sammy Sosa, the Cubs, has 36 in the American League. Junior Griffey with 39. Rafael Palmero with 29.
There's Todd Pratt. He pa tapped out to shortstop his first time up. Round out did knock in a run. Change up one ball of one strike. I believe he does a good job getting over there. Catches the ball, which you don't really try to do that as a catch. You just want to get over and get your body in front and keep the ball in front of you. Bonus if you do catch it. That's the inside, two balls and a strike. Chusky at first base. Nobody out here in the third. That's leading it two to one. Here's the ball softly. Bronia goes to second. Gets the lead out. Nice play by Rico. Got the lead runner. Husky at second base. Bronia to Relaford. Brad at first on a fielder's choice. Looks like this might have been another changeup right off the end of the bat. Of Todd Pratt. Rico comes in, charges it good, makes a strong throw. Desi does a good job staying in there. It's tough when you got that runner coming down on you. Actually, it's sometimes you get blocked for your view of the ball. You don't see it real well. They bring up Bernard Gilkey. He walked his first time up. with a curve ball one ball and no strikes had a disappointing year for New York after signing a large multi-year contract. They won't disappoint him. That ball is out of here into the Phillies' bullpen. Two on a home run. Bernard Gilkey and New York leads it 4-1. to one. His fourth home run of the year. There it is. Home Matt. run surrendered by Beach. He likes to throw that ball inside. He can't continues to pound in there. Guys cheat in there on him. There he's got an account of two and one. He just looks in there and lets it go. One or nothing to Luis Lopez. One on one strike. Bernard Gilkey. Fourth home run of the year. Two years ago for the Mets, he hit 30 of them. And he got that big contract there, really. 317 with 117 RBIs. Last year, he tailed off 18 homers, 78 at RBIs. Well, the Mets have taken a 4-1 lead here in the third inning. And 
the air to center field. Glanville will take care of that one. That's two down here in the third, and it'll bring up Ray Ordonez. Business person special number three against San Francisco coming up Monday, August 3rd at 105. Sponsored by Mellon PSFS. Take the afternoon off with family and friends or business associates. Monday, August 3rd, 105. Order your tickets for the business person special on line at phillies.com or call 215-463-1000. When you call that number, ask about the phone center special. Ordonia has singled his first time up. Had a cut of the high pass ball, one and one. First inning pitches, 23 second and 23rd. And he'll we'll have to throw some more here in the third as Ordonez gets his second hit of the ball game. And he'll turn the lineup over. And then we got Galen Sisko on the bullpen phone. Looks like a curveball. He just leaves up, gets it up high. Ordonez definitely likes that ball up. Mike Welch will start getting loose in the Phillies bullpen. Ordonez has 17 hits against Phillies pitching this year. Not hitting the rest of the league much, but certainly has got his hits against the Bills. to Bobby Jones sacrificed his first time up he's hitting at 240 he balls in a strike center field. Glenn Bell can't get it. Neither can Lewis. Going to third base is Ordonez. Looping single to right center field by pitcher Bobby Jones and the Mets have runners at first and third. Uh, things don't go right. They don't go right at all. He throws a fastball in there and jams him. Lewis going back just perfectly placed in between the three of them. That'll bring out Galen Sisko as Mike Welch gets up in the Phillies bullpen. So, Ben Brunner's first and third with two outs for the top of the order, Brian McRae. Cray has flied out to right on a good catch by Abreu, and he's been called out on strikes. For that pitch count, 83 pitches. We're not even through the third inning. That's, and that's it's nine innings for Maddox. Yeah, that's amazing. One strike to Brian McRae. the count to McRae. Runners at first and third. Two outs. Two runs in on a two-run homer by Bernard Gilkey. Change up. Had him out in front of him. One 
ball and two strikes to McCray. Two and two the count to McCray. Ordonez at third. Bobby Jones at first with two outs. Should be out of the inning on that fly ball to center field. Doug Glanville puts it away. That'll retire the side. Mets get two on the two-run homer by Gilkey. Three hits, no errors. They leave two. Chris Wheeler joins Larry Anderson the fourth after three, four, one, New York. Some of the concessions here at Shea Stadium in New York. It's the final visit for the Phillies here this year. They opened the season at Shea back at March 31st. And now finish up their season series here in New York with the Mets. The Mets will be coming to Philadelphia one more time. As we go to the fifth inning, that'll do it for Matt Beach. Kevin Sefcik will come out and bat as a pinch hitter. Sefcik, top of the order, Doug Glanville and Desi Relliford. Facing Bobby Jones, who got out of a jam last inning on a spectacular double play started by Olerud, who had just come into the game. Sestick batting 246, 2 for 17 as a pinch hitter. And a fly ball foul out of play down the right field line. Matt Beach out of the game now. There he is on the bench. Four innings, seven hits, four runs earned, three walks, and four strikeouts as you see his line with 106 total pitches struggled mightily through three innings and had a very strong fourth yeah he finished strong but a little too late breaking ball hit in the hole here comes Ordonez a quick release and a high throw and he's going to get an error on that one he might be a hit and an error but it'll be at least one error because he threw the ball away into the seat. So Adonis had plenty of time there because he gets to the ball so fast. Well, he gets there quick. And he, he doesn't even, you know, he just tries to catch it and throw it all in one motion and actually had a little more time than that. Not a lot because Seth runs pretty good and the ball wasn't hit that hard. You see, he just doesn't really have his weight on that back leg. He's all arm and try and compensate when you don't have your legs behind you and you end up air milling the ball a lot of times just like that. So they're going to score that in E6, an error all the way on Ordonez. His second error of the ball game. Got away with the first one as they pick Relliford off second. Here's Glanville, another ho-hum 14-gamer working, one for two today. He has an 18, a 17, and two 14-game inning streaks this year. Ray Ordonez now with nine errors, two today. Boy, he makes one you really would like to capitalize. About how fast he got to that. Now, a lot of shortstops on that play are just going to come in backhanded, plan, and throw. He got to it in such a hurry that he took it in front, and that may have worked against him because he didn't get real good footwork on it. Yeah, that's the thing. If you, if you plant your leg, you, you use your legs to help you throw, and it's a lot easier to make it just a, a nice throw over the top using your legs. When you go back there, you don't have your weight behind you. You throw, you try and, and throw all arm, and you end up you know, throwing a lot of times, throwing the ball high because it's all arm. You're not using your body behind it, and you feel like you have to throw, put more on it, elevate it a little more to get it there. Right. The way they teach you to play the infield is the backhand that play. You only take the ball in front of you on that play if you have to. And he did not have to because he had gotten to it so quick. quickly. Pitches inside, three balls and one strike. Philly's trying to put something together here. Bobby Jones is a guy you can score again. He's been not been pitching well for the Mets. In fact, his last time out, he gave up four runs on eight hits in seven innings. The Phillies last time against him got ten hits right. off him. As we mentioned earlier, he's very, very deliberate this afternoon. There he backs off again. Three balls and one strike on Doug Glanville with Desi Relliford in the two-hole today waiting on deck. Glanville walks. He wasn't sure. And Jerry Crawford says ball four, so the Phillies have two on. Doug, or... Uh, Jones there is not happy. Bobby Jones spent a long time staring in at Jerry Crawford. He thought he should get a strike on that. 
Now Relaford will bat. There's Jerry, one of the best in the league. And he's had to call a lot of pitches, and it's only the fifth. There's been, I mean, a lot of counts, deep counts. That that probably gets gets an umpire's ire more than anything. They're the base runners. Mets are looking for a bunt from Relaford. And he takes a full swing and hits at the center where McCray has a play. Sussex from the tag, and now he can't as Brian McCray gets it back in. So a wasted at bat there, a fly ball to center, one away. Third baseman, Scott Woolman. And Roland will bat. He has walked and grounded out the third. He's won for his last 16, and Apodaca, the pitching coach, comes out to have a talk with Bobby Jones as the Mets start to stir around in the bullpen. They do not have John Franco available again today. I saw you guys show a shot of him earlier. He's off to our right. He's serving the second day of his three-game suspension. And Valentine and Bruce Benedict taking a look at the lineup card while someone's on the bullpen phone. Bobby doing a little stretching in the dugout. Seems a little relaxed. Probably not quite as intense today as he was Thursday. The last couple days he's been able to kind of sit back a little more. Well, this is a tough town when things don't go right. So the pitch count there on Bobby Jones, 76 pitches. And Roland fouls one back. Phillies just need somebody to get a big hit for them in this series. And uh, it's another one of the problems with the, the offensively is is a lot of guys are at the same time and it happens a lot. A lot of guys are struggling. Said Desi's over 10 in this series. Roland's over 12 in the series. Rico at three for 12. Jeffries two for 15. And that's it's not going to get a lot a lot done. A lot of runs scored, and the pitching hasn't been that sharp. And that's that's the reason they're. He hits roll on the load of help. And Bobby Jones certainly didn't want to do that. Now Bronya will come up with the bases loaded and one out. And that will get the Mets bullpen up. They were on alert. And now they're jump into it as Bill Pulsifer, who's had a lot of arm problems, gets up. Well, he wants to come inside, Jones does, and just and he does not have good command today. The Phillies need to take advantage of that. Valentine has finished stretching and takes a seat. Bronya has popped up and flied out. He has been stuck on that 67 as far as the ribbies go for a little while. It'll be a nice time to get off it. Inside. And the crowd's starting to get a little restless. Last RBI was right before the All-Star break on January or January, July the 5th. So Rico looking for that first RBI since the All-Star break. Bases loaded and one out. Foul tip held on to by Piazza, one and one. Oh, well, he looked for a pitch there and let it go. There's nothing wrong with that. Now he now you gotta be a little more selective. He has hit two career grand slams, as you see there. Number three would give the Phillies a lead. <laughs> Jones kept looking back at Glanville. Now, he's not going anywhere, obviously, because there's a runner at third. One thing you see a lot of base runners that when they're at second base, they'll put an arm out, they'll put their left hand out. You know, I don't know why they do it, whether it's just feeling for something or whatever, but you see his left arm will be like he's reaching back towards the bag. Well, the pitch was going to be inside. Does he put his left arm up? A lot of times pitchers will think that the runner's giving him signs. High and outside, two and one. Yeah, good point. Thinks he's giving signs to the hitter. I think that's one thing. Jonesy was looking back at him and and glared at him even after he called timeout. Is like, you know, I hope you're not 
trying to let that hitter know what I'm throwing. That's just so obvious. If you were to do that. I mean, I know guys have relayed signs over the years, and there are a lot more subtle right. ways to do it. I mean, not signs as much as location. Put your hands on your hips. Right. Put your hands on your knees. Three and one. What a hitting spot this is now for Brony as Rico has patiently gotten to three balls and one strike. There's Sestic on at third. Glanville at second. Rolling at first. Fly ball right field. Husky coming in. He makes the play. Sussex going to tag and scores. The ball is cut off there by Oliver. It's a four to two game. Brony gets his 68th run batted in on the year. There are two outs and over to third goes Glanville. Oh, he had a pretty good pitch to go for his third grand slam. Looked like he just got it in on him just a little bit. Husky backs up behind the ball, which you're supposed to do. You come in so you have your momentum coming towards the plate, the way you're going to throw the ball. Makes a strong throw, but whether Olaru cuts it off or not, they wouldn't have. I mean, even if he lets it go through, they weren't going to get sepsic, and that way you can definitely keep that guy at first base. So it's a 4-2 to two game now in favor of the Mets, and Greg Jeffries the batter. Jeffries batting fifth today as they move Relaford up to the two-hole. That run will be unearned. As Sefcik, the pinch hitter, got on in the air by Ordonez. Greg has an infield single, scored the Phillies' first run. He's fly to left. No strikes. See how Jeffries adapts to this spot in the lineup and Relaford to the two hole because they like to go with this for a while. Because they like to use Relaford speed more at the top of the order. Fouled away by Jeffries. Now Jeffries, of course, was very comfortable in that two hole and swinging the bat well, but he's been hobbled by that ankle so much that Terry Francona told us today that he just thought that. He couldn't run well enough to be at the top of the lineup. Two and one. Mike Lieberthal is on deck, a right-handed batter. I don't think it's a it's a bad idea because Jeffries hits well with runners in scoring position, and that's and you want somebody that can drive some runs in there. Yeah, and Relaford gives you more speed up top. Curveball, and he jumped at it. Fly ball to left field. Jeffries, a fly ball to left field. Gilkey makes the play, an unearned run in the inning. On no hits, one error, and two left. It's four to two, New York. Categories down. All right, we'll check that, uh, think about that one. Is Mike Welch will come into the game. Welch making his second major league appearance, both of them here in this ballpark this weekend. See what he did the other night. Brian McCray hit a home run off him as he pitched a couple of innings. Welch is 6'2", a 210-pounder out of Haverhill, Massachusetts. Now makes his home in Nashua, New Hampshire, and was originally signed by the Mets. Between innings, there's Mark Anderson. <laughs> One of the hardest working guys in the yard today has been the home plate umpire. He's had to call a lot of pitches back there today. Jerry Crawford has. So Mark worked on him between innings over there by the Phillies dugout with a nice cold towel. And John Olerud will bat for the first time as he came in to replace Todd Pratt, who was 0 for 2 with an infield out RBI and a run scored. And there is a long ball. Right out of the chute, Olerud goes deep off Welsh. So John Olerudo did not start this game, but came in for defense and paid huge dividends with a great defensive play, and now a home run in his first at bat. Five to two, New York. Now 
It looks like they're going to try and go away. And Welch just threw this ball right down the middle, down low. Older likes the ball down there. And There's Gilkey trying to bunt his way on. It rolls foul. <laughs> Matt Beach going the first four innings. He's a pitcher of record. And now Mike Welch, who was originally signed by the New York, New York Mets. He was a third-round pick in June of 93, traded to the Phils for Hector Mercado. In December of 97, Mercado was on the disabled list for New York. Once again, Bobby Valentine with a great move. One ball and two strikes on Gilkey. Hale Root has certainly paid dividends today. Pitch to Gilkey's outside. He has walked and hit a two-run homer. His fourth of the year. Gilkey's had a tough season. Breaking ball off his foot, I guess. Yep, foul ball as Tom Howie in the third base umpire called it. And Jerry Crawford showing a little respect there for Bernard Gilkey. Runs a baseball all the way out to Mike Welch to give Gilkey a little time. Now that uh, that's a guy who has a feel for what's going on down there. And also obviously likes Bernard Gilkey. And Gilkey swings and misses and strikes out one away here in the fifth. Next homestand concludes with a trip from a couple of the West Coast clubs at Dodgers. That's their only appearance at Veterans Stadium this year. Three night games, 28th, 29th, and 30th, all at 735. Then the Giants for four games, all at different starting times. Remember the Sunday, August 2nd game is Kids Collectible Cap Day, and then a Mellon PSFS Business Person Special on Monday, August the 3rd. 215-463-1000 for your tickets or 24 hours a day phillies.com on the internet Louis Lopez the batter he's playing at second today given by Aragon afternoon off he's 0 for 2 switch hitter will bat left handed for the first time he fouls one back 5-2 Mets we are in the fifth Lopez started out with San Diego and had a serious elbow injury, missing an entire season now over here with the Mets. And they had him in the outfield for a couple games this year, although he is an infielder, a middle infielder by trade. He swings and misses in that breaking ball. Two straight strikeouts after the home run for Welch, two down. All right, throws his breaking ball here down and in. Actually, he's missed his spot there, but I think it's a great pitch. You throw something hard, a breaking ball, hard slider, curveball down and into a left hander off the plate. It's tough for him when you're ahead to lay off of it. And Lopez can't swing right over the top. For Donetsk, the batter, he's two for two today. He swings at the first pitch, fouls it out of play. A leadoff home run in the inning by Olerud, and now consecutive strikeout since then by Gilkey and Lopez. No balls and one strike on Ardonias, and a fastball a called strike. 0 and 2. Mike Welch in his second major league appearance. Slider away. 1 and 2. Well, it's not getting much of a chance to pitch early on because the starters have been doing such a good job. But in this series, two starters have gone early, so Welch getting two appearances. Breaking ball off his glove, and that'll probably, you know, Desi's there and it's safe. The just went in on his belly, and he'll be three for three. 
Looked like a hit, and then all of a sudden Relaford was on it quickly, and Ordonia slides, and normally you're out when you slide like that. Now he get his momentum going so well that way, and he saw it. Once Desi came in and got this barehanded, it looked like he would have a chance. But Ordonia is with that slide, just beats it. I think the ball, the play would have been made had Welch not deflected it because it was hit hard enough where it had gone over his head, but not too hard for Desi to get back there and make the play. And the Mets with a shot here, as you look at Ordonia, has a little skinned elbow with a shot to take Bobby Jones out of the ball game, but he will bat, and he's one for one. He blooped a single to right center his last time up. A pretty hot hitter. Seven for his last 13. He's hitting five out of his last seven starts. No balls and one strike on the Mets pitcher. Breaking ball, ball one, one and one. And Babe Ordonez continues to hit the really? Phillies pitching. Six for 13 in this series. I mean, All you hear is about Ordonez being an out in their lineup, but not against the Phillies. Hitting 240 on the year and is killing this Phillies pitching. See him leading off first as Jones takes a strike on a breaking ball. There is Ray Ordonez, a Cuban defector. What a spectacular defensive player he is. And he does things you just can't imagine. Fastball, he strikes out the side. A run on two hits, no errors, and one left. Through five, five, two. New York. Time now for that Dodge Stump the Experts trivia question and our guest. Sent in by Sean Hicks from Burlington, New Jersey. He's 12 years of age, named the only player in Philly's history with a combined total of 1,000 walks, RBIs, and runs scored. It's actually more than 1,000. Your answer would be Larry Anderson? Michael Jack. Has to be Michael Jack Schmidt. And it took a rare player to be able to do as many things. And there it is, the Hall of Famer. 1,507 walks, almost 1,600 RBIs, and 1,500 runs scored. Wow. 548 homers. Numerous gold gloves. What a great player. Five to two in favor of the Mets. As we go to the sixth inning, and Bobby Jones still in the game. Mike Lieberthal, one for two. He's lined out in single. The inning begins with a bullpen up for New York. As Jones has had a really shaky five, but his team has gotten him five runs, and he's only given up two. Strike call to Lieberthal. It'll be Lieberthal, Abreu, Lewis, and then the pitcher's spot with Jerry Spradlin up in the Phillies pen. Right. Off the glove of Ordonez, down the line. Gilkey's on it quickly, and Lieberthal will be held to a long single. Bernard Gilkey made a nice play. Looked like the Mets were going to make another spectacular defensive play, but the ball got by Alfonso. He smoked that ball right down the line. And look, it went off Alfonso's glove, I believe. But I mean, just it's just an instinct of play. You just the ball's hit and you react. And or don't you? I mean, uh, Alfonso reacts and almost comes up with it. Boy. Yeah, they have thrown some serious leather at the Phillies, especially yesterday and today. Is Greg McMichael? Is that McMichael? No, that's uh, Jeff Tam who was in the game the other night. See McMichael in two games in the series. Bobby Abreu, the batter, and a breaking ball misses. Valentine had the option to hit for Jones in the fifth, but decided to go with him another inning. Maybe try to get him straightened out. But it has been a struggle for his pitcher this afternoon, even though he has a three run lead. He'll go for the lead man, Lieberthal. Got him, and that'll be it. Abreu safe on a fielder's choice, one away. And Mark Lewis will bat 0 for 1. Second baseman, Mark Lewis. No, it's not hit hard. He just chops it in front of the plate. Surprised they didn't get a double play the way they've been playing defense. Ordonez gets it there. I don't know if he couldn't get it out of his glove, but Lieberthal doing a good job. See, he's trying to figure out which way the bag that Ordonez is going to go so we can break it up and he goes in there hard and that's what you got to do. Yeah he made Ordonez go in the air and Ordonez has made two throwing errors today decided well why throw this one. 
especially with a three-run lead, and put a runner in scoring position. Lewis smashes it fair down the third baseline. Abreu coming hard around second. Gilkey on it quickly. Vukovic will have to stop him at third. So Lewis has a double to left, and John Zuber is going to come up and bat for Welch with runners at second and third and one out. Oh, they're hitting the ball hard here. Fastball just right down the middle. Jones just does not have good command today. Philly's trying to take advantage of it. Bobby's going hard. He knows his, once it's by him, he's got nowhere to go, but just keep running. Until Vukovic holds him up. Bob Apodaca, the pitching coach there with the manager. And John Zuber, the batter. And that can play the infield back with a three-run lead. Philly's looking for some runs here to get back into this one. They only trail it by three. There you see the infield back for New York and Zuber, the batter. Batting for Welch, who will pitch one inning. Zuber has one home run this year. That was off David Cohn in Yankee Stadium. And now Jones steps off. John Zuber batting 250 as a pinch hitter, one for eight. The home run did not come in a pinch hitting appearance. He was already in that ball game. Pitch to him is a fastball and called strike outside corner. Doug Glanville on deck. Phillies have had a lot of base runners in this one, but only have been able to score twice in one of the runs unearned. There's Doug, who has a hit today to extend his ladies' hitting streak to 14. Mark Lewis, the runner at second base, and one, one away. And Abreu at third, a breaking ball misses, one and one. Mike Welch struck out the side in his one inning. Did throw the home run ball to Oler. Two balls and one strike to Zuber. Bobby Jones, a six foot four, 216 pounder, 28 years of age, out of Fresno, California. Number one pick of New York back in June of 91, and he is laboring. <laughs> Chopper to Ordonez. He will go to first and get the out there. Abreu scores. Zuber, an infield out RBI. It's 5-3 to three now in favor of New York, and over to third goes Lewis. Center fielder, Well, they concede the one run. Zuber gets it in. I'll tell you what to do. I mean, you'd like to get two in, but you definitely have to capitalize and at least get one in there. There's still a lot of game left. Now, the tying run would be Doug Glanville, and they're going to make a switch. They're going to bring that right-hander Jeff Tam into the game. Bobby Jones will depart after five and two-third innings. He cannot lose the game. He can only win it. So Jones's afternoon is finished as he'll be charged at this point with three runs, two of them earned. Pitching change for the New York Mets, five to two, or five to three now in favor of New York. And we'll be right back. Overlay game summary. Bobby Jones out of the game. He is a pitcher of record right now for New York. Went five and two-third innings. Charged with three runs. Two earned. See, so he walked three and struck out nobody. Bernard Gilkey has a two-run home run in the ballgame. The Mets don't hit many homers, but they've hit two today and lead this game by two runs. Olerud, a solo shot after he came in for Todd Pratt at first and made a spectacular defensive play. Doug Glanville, another hit today, and yet another 14-game hitting streak. 18, 17, and two 14 gamers for the amazing Doug Glanville. As you look at the Phillies bench, Desi Relford batting out of the two hole today will lead it off for the Phillies in the seventh inning. They trail by two for play by play. Here's Harry. All right, thanks, Wheels. 5 3 New York. It has not been a pretty game, but Phillies still could come back in this ball game. Jeff Tam, who came in in the sixth out in the mound for New York, 
Relaford waves through a fastball, one strike to him. Desi's 0 for 3, is flied out to center, been safe on an air, and flied out to center. Ham is a Florida State University product. And good numbers at Norfolk before being called up. He was 2-2 two and two in 32 games with a 1-8-2 ERA and five saves at Norfolk. Now balls and two strikes to Desi Relaford. Ground ball right back to Tam. Throws Relaford out. That's one down here in the seventh. Well, we have a doubleheader coming up against those Florida Marlins this coming Friday. Lots of baseball, lots of fun. Two games for the price of one. It's a rescheduled doubleheader. Between games, we'll have Sumo Mania, the wrestling event featuring some of your favorite Philly celebrities. That's on Friday, July 24th at 5.05. Order your tickets online at phillies.com or call 215-463-1000. Scott Rowland has hauled at his over. He had been in an over 16 skid, and he singles up the middle. So Rowland's been on base three of the four times he's been up. He's walked, he's been hit by a pitch, and now is singled, and the batter is Rico Bronia. Bronia has fouled out, flied out to left, and hit a sacrifice fly. <laughs> One strike to Rico Bronia. Rico had been on an RBI drought since the All-Star break. His sack fly hauled to that here today. It was his first run bat of him since the All-Star break. Well hit the deep right center field. This ball is off the base of the fence. Scott Rowland being waved around. He is going to score. It's a 5-4 ball game. The Phillies are within a run on an RBI double by Rico Bronia. Well, Rico had had an RBI since before the All-Star break, and he got off that last time up by that, with that sacrifice Nobody fly, and that ball had it looked like it had a chance to be a home run, but had a lot of top spin. See, it was a fastball away, and it started coming down in a hurry. But as Harry said as this inning began, this has not been a pretty game this afternoon, and... It's there for the taking. Yeah, sure is. And Scott Rowland, you know, if you're a third base coach, as John Vukovic is, you just love having Rowland on base because he gives you a chance to score him so easily. Now Bob Apodaca is coming out, and he is going to make a pitching change. So this is going to be it for Jeff Tam. Bill Pulsiver, the left-hander, will be called in. So Pulsiver coming on for Tam. We have a pitching change for the Mets. 5-4 New York in the seventh. Back after these messages. So a run 5-4 here in the seventh inning as Bill Pulsiver comes on. He is a 24-year-old. Big guy. 6'3", 200 pounds. Second round draft pick of the Mets in the 91 draft. Pulsiver. Since joining the Mets, is appearing in his 12th game. No wins, no losses, a 5-1-9 ERA. Eight and two-thirds innings, 11 hits, five runs. He has struck out six, walked two. Pulsifer is one of those guys a couple years ago where the Mets thought they had three or four starters coming along who would be their, the backbone of their team for a long, long time. They all got hurt, and he was one of them, and he's had some lost time for New York with elbow miseries. At Norfolk, he was a starting pitcher where he was 7 and 5 with a 3 9 6 ERA. Greg Jeffries will hit right handed against Pulsiver with a runner at second base. Rico Bronia, one out, and the Phil's trailing by a run. Jeffries has an infield single. Twice he has flied to left. One ball and no strikes. Pulsiver missed the entire 96 season with an elbow problem. See Greg Jeffries against left handed. Pitchers and you know Phillies used to think he had more power right-handed. That was when he was with the opposition and he debated whether to turn him around or not in the situation. Yeah, the Mets three years ago figured on this guy, a young left-hander named Wilson and Jason Isringhausen as being their right-hander named Wilson and Jason Isringhausen as, as being yeah. their dominant three for a long time. Out that way, but they're. 
veteran pitching staff has done very well, thank you. Right. The Rick Rees, the Hideo Nomos, and, and these guys. Well, they had to regroup when they all got hurt. I mean, they really thought they had three terrific pitchers, and it looked like they did, too. Round ball just fouled on the third base side. It's two and two to Greg Jeffries. Jeffries hit that ball hard and it almost caught a corner of the back. Five four, Phillies down by a run here in the seventh inning. Bonia at second base with one out. Curve ball, pop foul out of play. Stays at two and two to Greg Jeffries. Change up, foul back up, and just below us. Two balls and two strikes to Jeffries. Beats it foul. Jeffries making pulse of her work. Still two and two. Well, until Pulsifer got hurt, I mean, he was a starting pitcher throughout the Mets system. They never thought of him as a reliever, and that's what his role is now as they're trying to get him back into action. And Jeffrey spoils another breaking ball, two balls and two strikes. Pulsifer comes out of Fairfax, Virginia. Frank Jeffries really battling now against Pulsifer so far eight pitches in this at bat. Bouncing ball chopped at third base. Alfonso holds the runner and throws Jeffries out for out number two. And we'll bring up Mike Lieberthal who was two for three this afternoon. He's hit the ball hard each time up. Mike Piazza looking into the Mets dugout. Now they have a base open, but that's a go-ahead run for the left-handed batter on deck, so you wouldn't think they would walk Lieberthal here, but they might pitch carefully to him. There's Bobby Abreu, the on-deck batter, who's left-handed. Throwing at second base, two outs. I think that's what the Mets had in mind. You know, that conversation was about let's not let this guy hurt us, and Mike Lieberthal just got out front and almost put the Phillies ahead. Way out, but foul. And it never had a chance to be fair. No. Look how far that went. Well, from the get-go, certainly home run distance. But it wasn't even one that teased you. Well, Pulsifer, <laughs> he walks off the mound because he knows it. You know, whether they have a beach balls out there, something's loose in center field and McCray's getting rid of some paper there. But he knows that he came very, very close to making a huge mistake. One loud strike to Lieberthal. Change up away, one one. I think that's what they had in mind. Lieberthal has really good numbers against left-handed pitching. Oh. 
Looped into right field. It's going to fall for a hit. Here comes Bronia. Huskies throw is going to be late. Phillies tie the game at 5-5 on a looping single to right by Mike Lieberthal. His third hit of the ball game. Well, they haven't had a whole lot of bleeders in this series, and that one couldn't have come at a better time. They're trying to pitch around Lieberthal, especially after that first one. That might have been another changeup because it was way away from him, and he was out front, and he hit it right on the end of the bat, and nobody could catch it. Now, with two outs, Brony got a great jump off second. So Husky made a pretty good throw, but he was able to score because of the jump that he got. So the Phils have come back to tie this game at five. The batter is Bobby Abreu, who is one for three. One strike to Abreu. Well, that's they're trying to piece this together now out of their bullpen because they do not have Franco available again. Either Cook or McMichael would be the guy they would want to close with, but now they don't have a situation to close. The Phillies have caught him, which is... Nice to see after the struggle of the last couple days. One on one to Bobby Abreu. There's Dennis Cook. He was out there with those triplets today. Yeah, had his babies here today, his father children's game. <laughs> but he had the triplets out. Fouled off his foot at the plate, one and two. They were the first children for Dennis Cook and his wife. They got a three bagger. <laughs> they all boys? I don't believe so. I, I meant to ask you that when we saw him in Philadelphia. There's Dennis Cook, who played for the Phillies, of course, for a while. Just a great guy. Good old boy from Texas. Yep. Ooh, man. What a knockdown pitch that was. Abreu saw his life flash in front of him there. He's diving out, thinking Pulsifer's going to go away, and he whistles a fastball right up around his coconut. Look out. Look at that. If you don't throw a breaking ball after that pitch, it'll be a surprise. That'll give a hitter serious happy feet. To a fastball in again. Mm. Now Mark Lewis, a right-handed batter, is on deck, and they do have Wendell up in the bullpen, the right-hander, Turk Wendell, and there's Lewis. Full count to Bobby Abreu. All that went out of play, still three and two. There's Wendell. Seen him yet in the series. Michael without John Frank, who's right on the floor right, serving a suspension. Line drive to right field. It is a fair ball going all the way to the corner. Lieberthal being waved around. The throw to no throw to the plate. Abreu heading for third base. Safe there. Phillies lead it 6-5 to five on an RBI triple by Bobby Abreu. Hey, that took some guts to hang in there after that pitch up around his chin. That was a terrific at bat. You know, when you get a ball up around your head the way that he did, a lot of times he had bats over. Bobby Abreu hung in there and then finally got that fastball, which was middle in, and smoked it into the right field corner. And with two outs, Lieberthal got a really good jump. It took Husky a long time to get in and get that ball. And Vukovic was able to wave him home with the go-ahead run. What an inning. It has been a good inning for the Phils. They really struggled offensively in this series, but have put six on the board and take a one-run lead. They're going to walk Lewis, but Kevin Jordan was in the on-deck circles, so... I don't know. I would, I'm a little surprised they're walking Lewis here, who is one for two with a double, but they are going to intentionally walk him, even though Kevin Jordan was out in the on deck circle. Yeah, it wasn't as if you were worried about, you know, you have to do this here because they they might pinch it or they might not pinch it. I mean, it was obvious what was going to happen. So now they'll probably go to Wendell, obviously, the right hander to face Jordan. So Bobby Valentine would rather that match of either. Wendell against Jordan as opposed to Pulsifer against Lewis or whoever came up. I think. So Jerry Spradlin is pinch hit four. He went one strong inning, one, two, three. And I guess now well, here comes Apodaca. Yeah, they're not going to let left-hander yeah, pitch well, to this guy. Wendell will 
Wendell will be called in from the bullpen. And, and you know, Terry Francona doesn't mind that at all because Kevin Jordan really hits right-handed pitching. So the Mets are going to make another pitching change. This is their th second pitching, their third pitching change in this inning. Halsever is getting the Bronx cheer here in Queens. And Wendell will come on. We have a pitching change for the Mets. Phil's lead 6-5 back after these messages. Bay Stadium, Phillies lead 6-5. Double switch for the Phils. Ruben Amaro comes out to play left field, and the new pitcher will be Mark Leiter. Leiter trying to save this one for Jerry Spradlin. This will be his 44th game. He's 1-2, lost to 20 saves, a 3-2-9 ERA. 54 and two-thirds innings, 43 hits and 20 earned runs. 49 strikeouts, 24 walks. Opponents hitting 224 against him. And he will be facing the top of the mat order. Brian McRae, Edgardo Alfonso, and Mike Piazza. So Leiter comes on. Bill's coming back in this game. Trailing a 1.52, have a 6-5 lead. Big inning in the seventh inning when the Phillies scored three in the seventh. Wayne Gomes just a great job again this afternoon. Two innings, six up and six down, three of them by strikeouts. What a job he has done out of the pen this year. You see the bullpen comparison and the starters. Matt Beach ended up throwing over 100 pitches in four innings. Guard with four runs at the bullpen has kept it close and the Phillies have taken the lead. Brian McRae will lead off against Leiter. McRae is nothing for four. Twenty-nine thousand five twenty to pay crowd here at Shea. One strike to McRae. Breaking ball, strike two. Nothing and two to Brian McRae. Splitter ball dropped by Lieberthal, but he throws out McRae. So Leiter starts it with a strikeout, one down. It'll bring up Edgardo Alfonso. Two fastball, breaking ball, and then the hard splitter to Brian McRae, and he got him to chase here for the big first out in the ninth. Alfonso is single, walk popped up and flied out. inside one ball and no strikes just miss ball two two and nothing and a strike to Alfonso. High with a ball three. I want to walk anybody with the thunder to follow Alfonso. You've got Piazza on deck, then Butch Husky, and then John Olerud. to try not to have to face Olerud. So Alfonso 
was a one-out base runner for Mike Piazza. There it is. He's high with it. Ryder knows that's something he didn't want to do. No, and uh, he was he really threw well to um, McCray leading off the inning. He was also taking some pitches, trying to get on, and Alfonso, to his credit, he just wasn't going to swing right away. He was going to see if he could get on and get that time, or that go-ahead run to the plate, and he did. That'll send Terry Francona to the water cooler. Piazza is one for four this afternoon. There he is career-wise against Mark Ryder. Strikes. Bullpen had done a really good job. The last Mets base runner had been the infield hit by Ordonius in the fifth inning prior to that walk there by Leiter here in the ninth. to try to win the game with one swing misses it one and one wow what a battle that was that's a high fastball and Leiter just threw it by him the outfield playing very deep Come out to the old ballpark for right here. These kind of battles. Bills lead by a run, bottom half of the ninth inning. Passing inside, it's two and one. Frank Donald jotting something on a car just to keep himself occupied. He takes a lot of notes during here. Oh, that was close. Didn't get the call, and he's falling behind Piazza three and one. It looked like he threw a breaking ball there, and I, I think he thought he got it. Uh, Jerry Crawford says it's outside, and it was. Yeah. Yeah. So now he's in the hole three and one to the dangerous Mike Piazza. Gave him a three run breaking ball and walked him. Two straight walks, and now Leiter is going to have to, unless he gets a double play from Husky, he's going to have to face John Olaru. A guy who on. Thursday night, and the Phillies win here, hit a home run off him. Right, and has hit a home run today. He waits on deck, Butch Husky the batter. Husky lifetime has been tough on lighter as well, six for 15. He's set up their infield at double play depth, two men on base, and one out. Got that breaking ball over. One strike to Husky.
Terry Francona looking calm and cool. All right. You know, inside he's not. <laughs> Missing inside two and one. Well, he's gotten the game to work, you know, the part that he wants it. He's got his closer in the game with a one-run lead. Now it's up to the players to do the job. Right here is dug a hole for himself here in the ninth inning. Aiden, a 2-1 breaking ball and fooled Husky, who was swinging fastball. Did he ever fool him? Husky's geared into a, to a fastball here. He's ahead in the count, and later throws a hard slider, and he chases it. That's a heck of a pitch to throw there, because you go 3-1, and one, now you, you almost have to throw a fastball. Now what do you throw? I'd throw, I'd throw something off speed to try and take advantage of him being aggressive here, overly aggressive. Two balls and two strikes. Struck him out. Got him with a fastball, I think. It was. It was a running fastball in a pitch that he really hadn't shown him. Well, I think he did one earlier, one in the count. But I'll tell you what, he, he, he wasn't going to let him get extended, so he throws this in. Now, thank goodness he swings over it, because you don't want him dropping the bat head on that. Good pitch by Leiter. Two outs. Now he's got to face John Olerud. Not that big a deal, is it? Uh, you don't want to hear his numbers against I, Mark Leiter. I, I know them. They're awful. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's due to make it out. Oh. 10 for 13. Here comes Terry Francona. You know what this is about? And he doesn't want to say it necessarily because you don't want to have, you know, the go-ahead run at second base. But, you know, he's going to tell him right here, we do have a base open. We're not going to walk him, but don't let him beat you with something middle in. Gilkey, uh, who is on deck, is a 350 hitter against Leiter with two homers. Right, but so, you still have to take your chances that way. Okay, hey, just pick your poison. Yeah, pick your poison. What, what has hurt Leiter is the two walks, especially the walk to Edgardo Alfonso with right. one out. Right, because it got Olerud up, who was a fifth batter in this inning. Olerud's been a bat twice since entering the game. He has homered. Oh, it boils down to lighter against Olerud. And play your infielders back pretty far, too, because Olerud's a very slow runner, and you want to make sure that something doesn't get through. And there you see the infield defense. Two outs, two men on base in the ninth inning. Fastball just missed with it. One ball and no strikes. This game had some moments in it today that weren't too hot, but it sure got good here at the end. Oh. Really been entertaining. Strike the breaking ball, one on one, the count to Olerud. John Olerud came on the line here in the bottom of the ninth. Just came inside with a slider, three and one. He won't throw him anything, anything to hit. If he walks in, then they'll take their chances with guilt. Right, that's what that mound conversation yeah. was about, as we talked about when Terry Francona went out there, that if you do, in fact, have a base open, there's your situation. in the inning and two strikeouts. Olerud didn't get anything to hit. 
And now it boils down to Leiter against Bernard Gilkey. Yeah, because all of a sudden your margin for error is history. As you take a look at the bullpen, there are two guys left out there, Perez and Metallica. And it's Leiter's game. Gilkey has walked, hit a two-run homer, struck out, and popped up. have to worry a little bit about that splitter. Lieberthal will have to be on his toes with a runner at third base. Just missed with a slider. One ball and no strikes. Pretty good discipline by Gilkey to stay off both of them, too. Well, they were both fairly close. Yep. He almost has to throw a fastball here. He did, and he missed it. Three and nothing to Gilkey. Bad by Gilkey, that's low. So the pitch around to Olerud certainly didn't work because he didn't throw a strike to Gilkey in four pitches. And he misses with that one. One and nothing to Lopez. Lopez probably will, he won't swing the bat until he gets a strike. Well, if he does, he'd be awful surprised. Got a strike. One ball and one strike. Four walks in the inning have tied the game. Now they're out of play. One ball and two strikes. for the subway. They turn around and watch from the subway platform. And the Mets have tied it here in the bottom of the ninth on four walks. Struck out Lopez and will be going extra innings. So he struck out the side and also walked four in the inning. One run, no hits, no errors. Mets leading loaded. So we're moving to the 10th inning. We are tied at 6-6. Six, six. Well, we move to the 10th inning of a 6-6 six, six ball game. And leaving off for the Phils will be Mike Lieberthal. Philly so far in extra inning games are 7-4, two and 2-at and two home, 5-2 and two on the road. That's such a tough ninth inning because they had to work so hard to finally get a lead in this game. The way things have gone, 
this weekend. And they give it up on four walks and now have to take this team into extra innings. That's an extra innings. They're playing their six. They are two and two at home and one and oh on the road. Dennis Cook, who worked the ninth, back out there in the tenth. One ball and no strikes to Lee Ball. Straight back, one of on the count to Lee Rippon. Well, the Phillies double switched with Amaro coming into the game and Lighter in the in the bottom of the ninth inning, so they can stay away from Lighter's spot at least and use him for another inning if uh, Terry Francona wants to do that. Amaro with batting third in this inning. Lee Rippon is three for four on the afternoon. Hit it hard all four times up. Takes it low, two and one. It's six here in the tenth inning. Hits a shot off the glove of Lopez and into left field. Probably will be scored a hit. Should be. That was and it is. I don't know if Ordonez would have caught that. I mean, Ordonez is so good, he probably would have. We'll never know. Because Lopez is in the game now for the last couple innings. But this ball is a rocket. It took a bad hop, too. Brings on Bobby Abreu, who is two for four with a triple. His triple knock put the Phillies in front in the seventh inning. That's a look for a bunt now with a left left situation. John Olerud coming in to talk to Dennis Cook. Alfonso up on the grass at third. Ruben Amaro in the on deck circle, a switch hitter. And then it would be Kevin Jordan. Nobody up in the bullpen for New York. is down to bun he takes it high for a ball one and nothing six six here in the tenth inning It. Fielded by Alfonso, sacrificed good by Abreu. It goes Alfonso to Lenny Harris. Moves Lieberthal up to second base. Nice job by Bobby Abreu and, and Alf Alfonso for a little bit of time there. Thought about letting that roll. We'll see if it would go foul. And then he realized I can't take a chance because it's yeah. hugging that grass too much. Watch Alfonso here. He kind of sneaks up on it. I mean, he could get to it a lot faster. See how he's waiting back, waiting back. Now he decides I better go get it and make sure I get that out at first. Ruben well, tomorrow will bat. He's hitting a 167. Most of his hitting has been done from the left side as a right-hand hitter, just one for 15. Well struck to left center field, and that ball is one hopping off the base of the fence. Ruben Amaro rolls into second with an RBI double. And the Phillies have regained the lead 7-6 to six here in the 10th inning. Wow. How about that? They make that double switch to have him available and to keep away from the second pitcher's second spot. It looked like Ruben got a first ball fastball from Dennis Cook. And he crushed it. Harry mentioned he hadn't done much right-handed this year. Let's see what that pitch is. It was. First ball, fastball right down the middle. And he hit that thing hard to left center field, and he knew it when he hit it. Brings on Kevin Jordan. Jordan earlier had come in as a part of a double switch. He is 0 for 1. Well, Leiter's going to get another chance. He'll get a chance to... Win this game, he blew the save. He'll get an opportunity to win the game. There's Mark. 
you know he really wants another shot after what happened. I mentioned they got it right where they want. You know there'll be people say, ah, you should have pitched Gomes three innings. We well, don't do that. Gomes doesn't pitch three innings. In fact, you're you're lucky when you get two out of him. Slater's job to pitch the ninth inning. He didn't get it done. Now I have another shot. That's the way you do it. There's Gomes who did his job and turned it over to the closer. Smothers a ground foul, two and one to Kevin Jordan. With the line on lighter so far. Look at this. That's ugly. <laughs> Ball was never in play. Never in play. <laughs> Closest it came to being in play was on the drop third strike. Not the drop third strike, the block third strike, where they had a completed 2 3. And Mel Rojas is up in the net bullpen. Well, they're down to Rojas and McMichael now without John Franco. And there is Mel Rojas, who has had a lot of problems here lately, although they're trying to work him back in and get him into games without any pressure. This certainly would not qualify as one of them. Bills have taken a 7-6 to six lead. There's John Franco. He is... The second day of a three-game suspension. Well, he has to be answered, you know, as hyper as he is. <laughs> Sitting there as a spectator, knowing that he would probably be in this ball game. That's to drive him nuts. That's his family over there with him because it was family day here at Chase Stadium where the kids had that little baseball game prior to our game. Two and two to Kevin Jordan. Field side destined for the crowd. Well, is he getting some swings at Dennis Cook? I mean, he's out front of a lot of this stuff and pulling it foul, but he has gotten some rips as he normally does. Well, an extra run certainly would look nice. I think Kevin Jordan doesn't get cheated very often. And he's out front of this one again, but he has had some very good swings in this at bat. full count. Good base runner at second. Ruben can run pretty well. They would love to get an extra run here. And the outfielders are pretty deep. How's it straight back? That went right into Timmy the Mac's boot. Yeah. And we catch Timmy the Mac in the restroom in the sixth inning. He was busy before the game, so we didn't see him. Nope. I saw him just briefly. Just got in from St. Louis last night. Evan Jordan will give you an at bat. Yeah. He is a professional hitter. Volkan holds to him with a mile at second base. One out, a run in. Pills lead it seven to six. Fouls that fastball back. Still three and two. Trying to even this four game series. It's a big ball game for the Phillies. On the trip for the win, they would be six and four. <laughs> so 
Looking at me. off another one. I mean, Cook's throwing him everything he has. Fastball, breaking balls, change-ups. And Kevin Jordan keeps fouling him off. Fixes those gloves, concentrating. Go for most valuable players on this club. He's right up there, in my opinion. That's the toughest job in baseball. That's pinch hit. Play once in a while. Three and two to him. Another foul ball. How many pitches? What, about 10 in this at bat? I, yeah, I think so. A lot of fans I mean, still anything here. Around, anything around the plate, he's going to be hacking at. He's, he's not going to take a walk, I don't think. No. No, unless Cookie bounces one up here, yeah. and he might. Unless it's really yeah. a bad pitch. But I mean, anything close, he'll be hacking at. Right. And he'll get his bat on. I was going to say, there's still quite a few people left here, and a lot of them are getting late inning souvenirs. Kevin Jordan has doled out double-digit souvenirs. And Dennis Cook, to his credit, he keep, Cookie just keeps throwing strikes. There comes a point sometimes where a pitcher will just throw one up out of the strike zone, see if maybe yeah. they'll chase it. Yeah. Or sometimes they'll throw it down the middle and let them hit it. Now with a man on second, though. Another foul. <laughs> Played by the ball boy who gets a souvenir there. Is that ball whistled by Johnny Vuk? Who is he happy? He stayed for 10. Count holes to Kevin Jordan. Fair ball, well hit, but right at McRae. And that's out number two here in the tenth inning. It'll bring up Doug Glanville. That was a terrific battle. I mean, Cook didn't give in, and Kevin Jordan kept swinging at strikes. Glanville is one for four this afternoon with a walk. Now, Piazza and uh, Cook are going to talk about it. See, see Piazza look back over his shoulder. We didn't see it. We didn't have it on there. But he looked back over his shoulder to see who's in the on-deck circle. It's Relaford, a switch hitter. Glanville, the batter. They do have a base open. And then Piazza took a look into his own dugout. And Mets pitching his handle, Desi Relaford, today. He is 0 for 5. So they are going to intentionally walk Glanville and go after Relaford. A 15 pitch at bat for Kevin Jordan. <laughs> so they will pitch to Relaford. This will put two men on base with two outs here in the 10th inning. Desi will try to make him pay. But he was hitless this afternoon. Nothing for five. Got picked last time by Louis Lopez at second on ball. Looked like a base hit. That's when Lopez was at second. He's now at short. Good time to snap that little 0 for he has going. Yeah, Desi does not want to wear an 0 for 6 collar on this Sunday. Oh, here's Relaford. Amaro at second base. Glanville at first base with two outs. Up is high with a fastball. One ball and no strikes. a foul out of play down the first base side. One of one to Relaford. Wide. 
two balls and a strike. Bills leading here in the 10th inning, 7-6. to six. Ruben Amaro's RBI double, putting the Phils in front here in the 10th. and two strikes to Relaford. Bobby Valentine has two moves left off his bench. Pretty good hitter and Matt Franco from the left side and Carlos Baerga a switch hitter. He was a better hitter left-handed. Right. <laughs> Relaford called out on strikes. That will retire the side. The Phillies got a run in the inning. Two hits, no errors, leaving two. We go to the bottom of the tenth. Seven, six, Phils. To the bottom of the tenth, the Phils back out on top. Seven to six. Mark Leiter has a chance to win this one now. He blew the save in the ninth inning when the Phillies led six five. Struck out the side, but walked four batters, forcing in a run with the bases loaded, two out walk to Gilkey. I will try to get him down and preserve this 7-6 lead for the Phils. Lenny Harris will be the first one to face him. Harris came in as a pinch hitter and stayed in the game. Wayne Gomes struck him out and is only at bat. One ball and no strikes to Harris. Brown ball sharply hit, but had Kevin Jordan. That's one down here in the tenth. Lenny Harris did not take at least one strike, which is a it's a huge mistake for a veteran player. I mean, the Mets proved that in the ninth thing. Really happy that he didn't, but you don't play the game that way. Matt Franco comes out to pinch hit. Franco hitting a 263. As a pinch hitter, just three for 23. He's had an off year as a pinch hitter because over the years he's been a pretty good pinch hitter for New York. Been hurt, too. He was out for a while with a broken toe. One strike to Franco. Bills lead seven to six. Frank Lieberthal's been back there a long time. This guy swings at the first pitch. Fouls it off Lieberthal's mask. Lieberthal has seen a lot of pitches today. And he's swung the bat great. Four hit game. He has really battled it back there on a tough afternoon. One one. I was thinking the Mets took a heck of a chance today, and it worked out for them. But they took Pratt out of that game in the fourth inning, which really worked out with all the things Ola Roots done. But they were rolling the dice. That nothing would happen to Piazza because he's a backup catcher, Todd Pratt. You realize that Franco played the high school ball with Mike Lieberthal? Is that right? Matt Franco at Westlake California High School. Lops a foul. Nobody's going to catch that one. I know he's Kurt Russell's nephew. Kurt Russell's nephew, and he played high school ball with Levy at Westlake. Well, I'm sure there's somebody out on the, on the New York Mets that serves as their emergency catcher that as soon as that happened in the fourth inning today, they went, oh, no, not me. That's always a risk when you do that yeah, early in a ball game. Yeah, it is. Two balls and two strikes to Franco. Hold up 
two on it. A pinch double for Matt Franco. Matt Franco, as Harry mentioned, a really good pinch hitter. Not so much this year, but he gets a job done there. He didn't do, try to do too much. And the Talico gets up. Here's the pitch. It's away from him. And, you know, Leiter's trying to get him to pull that pitch. And he did. And he hit it just inside the line for an extra base hit. Brings on Brian McRae. Ricky Batalico starts to throw in the Phillies' bullpen. And I'm up into McRae's 0 for 5 this afternoon. First three games of this series, and he's taking the collar here today. One on one. lead 7-6 we are in the 10th inning fly ball to right field the player has to backtrack he makes the catch Franco will tag and move to third after the catch two outs runner at third base for Edgardo Alfonso third baseman Edgardo Alfonso well, Brian McCray just misses this one Watch the swing he gets here. That pitch is up. It's a slider. And he just gets under it. And he knows it. So Edgardo Alfonso is single walk, popped up, flied out, and walked. Now a lot of pressure on Lieberthal again on a ball in the dirt because they want to get Alfonso out with Piazza on deck, obviously. Right. Franco at third with two outs. Nothing to Edgardo Alfonso. Almost hit him to a nothing. He's not pitching around it. Mike Piazza waiting on deck. Give Alfonso some credit. I mean, he got to walk to start the ninth, and he's being patient now. Three and nothing. Look who looms on deck. Mike Piazza. What a game. Just about at the four-hour mark. Yeah. It's been some afternoon here. Got that one over, three and one. and third with two outs. Fifth walk surrendered by Leiter. How does Terry Francona stick with Leiter or does he go to Ricky Batalico? Oh, I don't think you put Batalico in this spot. I don't think he's ready for this. Probably not. In his career, Batalico is called Piazza Hippos. Right, but I don't think he's that kind of pitcher right now. First and third, two outs for Piazza, who is one for 
four with a walk. I'll tell you what's a big decision now for the Phillies. What do you do if the runner goes? And that's what Mike Lieberthal is doing out front right now. He's gotten the signs from the bench. He's giving signs as Lieberthal right in front of home plate to the middle infielders on what you do if that runner goes. Do you throw through? Do you fake it? I don't know. First of all, I don't know that Alfonso would run with Piazza up there and even take the chance. We'll see first and third with two down here in the bottom of the 10th. Waves through a breaking ball, one strike to Piazza. I think he had a backup slider that time. I mean, that ball looked like it moved backwards. Piazza thinks he has this one right in the middle of the plate. Look at it spin back. I mean, if you could throw that pitch and knew you were going to throw it, it'd be a heck of a weapon. slide ball. Home run distance but foul. Nothing in two to Piazza. Now, do you try to get him to chase a split with that tying run of third? Sure. Well, I wouldn't stay away from... Oh, man. that one backed up, too. That looked like a split. I thought it was a breaking ball at first. I think that was a split. I don't know what you... Yeah, I... You know, you don't want to throw him a fastball away, that's for sure, because that's his power. So take a chance and bounce one. Lieberthal for a high pass for a high fastball, but you Another know he, high. yeah, exactly. I mean, he can tomahawk that high fastball, and he got a pitch or two to play with here too. Oh, and two to Piazza. See what he's going to call. So. Struck him out to end the ball game. With a heater, wasn't it? I think it might have been a fastball, yes, and that will end the game. The Bills hang on to win seven to six for the Mets. No runs, a hit, no errors, two left. So the Phillies flip the series at two games apiece and go six and four in this trip. Ruben Amaro got the game-winning hit in the top half of the tenth inning. <laughs> <laughs> what an afternoon. They're all easy, Terry. 7-6, Phillies win in 10. Bobby Abreu got a big hit for the Phillies in the seventh inning, and Ruben Amaro got the big hit. He is our Chevrolet player of the game. It is only a bat. He doubled in the winning run in the top half of his tenth inning as the Bills won it by a score of 7-6. to six. Our Budweiser play of the game came when Ruben stepped to the plate. Yeah, he had the runner on at second base. They had sacrificed in front of him. First ball, fastball from Dennis Cook. He hits it off the base of the gap sign out there in left center. Run scores easily. There's Lieberthal trotting home, which would turn out to be the winning run. Here's the final pitch. We wonder what he threw. It looked like a low fastball. Had him 0-2. It was. It was a low fastball, and he got him to swing over it. What a game this was. Mark Leiter wins it. He's 3-2 and two as Ruben Amaro is the star of the game for the Phillies with that game-winning double in the 10th inning. Bills win it by a score of 7-6-10. and 10. We'll be back with the totals and a recap right after these messages. 